Just confirm if it is visible. Uh, yes. yes, it is visible. Thanks for confirming. So without wasting too much time, let's get started over here uh, with the webinar uh, on uh, overview of uh, AZ104 certification. Exactly what AZ104 certification is all about, what all things it targets, and uh, some tips about how we prepare along with some resources that are available to prepare for this certification. OK, so here let's talk first of all about the AZ-104 certification exam, the official name for which is Microsoft Azure Administrator. AZ-104 is just the exam code over here for the unique identity purpose because many times there are multiple exams with the similar names and uh, to differentiate between those exams, usually the exam codes are used. Officially conducted by Microsoft, which basically validates the skills and the knowledge required to manage the various aspects of uh, Azure infrastructure solutions. That basically starts with uh, Azure identities. So when I talk about Azure identities, it could be also about Azure Active Directory and related things, managed identities, identity and access management, then authentication authorization at different levels, maybe for different Azure services, maybe for applications, maybe for some APIs, or whatever deployment you are actually planning to do within Azure that also could be about virtual machines and virtual network access. So not only managing the security and permissions, it's all about the governance as well, where we need to actually keep on monitoring what is going on, whatever the policies that we have created are as per the standards or not, and behaving as per the standard set or not. These standards might be set by the organization itself, and sometimes the organization need to additionally put the standards which are probably given as input by the respective governments in that particular local area. Uh, usually the governments of different geographies also come up with their own requirements in terms of securities, right? So that is first part of it. Then implementing and managing the storage how the data storage basically is uh, implemented and managed. This could be relational storage. It could be non-relational, no SQL storage, raw data storage, whatever. Deploying, managing Azure compute resources or compute solutions, which primarily focuses on virtual machines, virtual networks, and the containerized services as well like you can have a container created using docker or similar service created which you want to host on cloud it could be the container that needs to be put on the cloud in such a way that it is available to be used or reused by someone else uh, as a template we uh, usually go for it as we put those containers or container images precisely into the container registries. So we do have a solution on Azure for that, which is named as Azure Container Instances and Azure Container Registry, ACR. Beside that, we do have support for Azure Kubernetes service also, where Kubernetes itself is a third party service, which is now integrated fully with Azure and available on Azure with the name AKS or Azure Kubernetes Services in order to allow you to manage all Kubernetes related deployments, Kubernetes uh, related deployments. So as I said, this also includes configuring and managing virtual networking, then monitoring and maintaining the different Azure resources, 
this is all about the high level view or bird's eye view about the AZ104 certification. Next thing that we need to understand is for whom the certification is for. So basically people coming from IT infra management background, like the system admins, I'm not talking about the hardware engineers. I'm talking mainly about the system administrators who take care of the networking configuration, who take care of the server setups, deployments, who take care of the entire security policy management, who take care of Active Directory or equivalent services like in general, we do have LDAP services where Active Directory is adoption of LDAP by Microsoft. They named it as Active Directory services, right? So that summarizes all. It is all about managing and maintaining operating systems, which includes server operating systems, client operating systems, then networking, then management and maintenance of the servers themselves virtualization so different virtualization environments needs to be configured needs to be made available for the users as and when needed in addition the professional in this role should have the experience to manage these things as well and for that usually we go for the automation using powershell maybe if it is like people have some hands on experience on azure already Along with PowerShell, you should have some experience, some hands on experience on Azure CLI also. The advantage of Azure CLI is regardless of the fact whether you are uh, well versed with uh, PowerShell or Bash Shell, the Azure CLI makes the commands available for both environments consistently. I mean, the same set of commands basically you can use in your preferred environment. So that's where Azure CLI is important. Working with Azure portal, working with Azure resource manager templates or ARM templates, working with Microsoft Azure Active Directory, and before working with Azure Active Directory, you should be having some hands-on experience on Windows Active Directory services also on your Windows server. and then the services like Azure Sentinel and Microsoft Entra and so on. So though you may not have professional level experience on all those things, there is some exposure which is expected over here so that you understand the concepts pretty easily. And uh, basically while preparing for the exam, you will actually be getting more professional experience in all those areas, right? So basic knowledge is what we expect that the candidate must have. Some on-premises infrastructure management uh, level experience, if you have, that really makes the life much more easier in order to prepare for this AZ-104, AZ-104 exam. I hope that is clear. OK, so the main topics which are covered in the exam are on the screen. These are available on Microsoft's official portal for the AZ-104 exam as well. So this is just a copy of the same. It starts with Azure Identity and Governance, different topics like manage Azure Active Directory objects, manage Azure AD authentication for different applications, individual applications, enterprise applications, etc. Then configuring Azure AD integration with on-premises AD directories. <coughs> this is also an important topic because many times what happens is you may, you may be working with the hybrid model where your users are using the resources within on-premises uh, environment plus the cloud environment both at the same time. So definitely your organization will not be interested in maintaining the user base for two environments separately. 
you might need an integrated environment with single sign on behavior configured and that's where this configuring azure ad integration with on premises ad is very very important then role based access control or rbac which is where we start with identity and access management as well and then implementing and managing different azure policies in terms of security next says azure storage so here we need to focus on create and configure storage accounts so basically it's all about what is storage account what is storage service what is storage account how do we create that how do we configure that how do we secure that how do we manage the data in the azure storage service what all options are there in what formats or what kind of data we can store into it and then ultimately configuring some of the specific type of services further which probably aid in big data analytics as well so that includes azure files and azure blob storage along with azure data lake storage next part is compute services which includes azure virtual machines so creating configuring virtual machines that's the first thing automation of the vm deployment with the help of arm services or arm templates how do we manage the vm sizes this is all about the upscaling part of it where the configuration of the virtual machines can be upgraded like we may start with a very standard configuration of say 3.5 gb ram and two uh, core cpu and maybe some 10 gb storage or something like that but once the need grows we might need to actually upgrade and then beside this we need to also think of high availability services previously this used to be called as always on or always available also so high availability is more about keeping your servers ready all the time with near to zero downtime which is very very important for enterprise apps i hope everyone understands that along with this in a worst case scenario if there is some downtime occurring if there is some trouble which is uh, being faced by the virtual machine or maybe the infra on which the vm is hosted i mean the data center itself there has to be a backup also planned which allows you to restore the state of your virtual machine quickly and make it available once again maybe on the same data center or maybe on some other data center for the time being tell your main data center is not alive again no matter how reliable your services are still there has to be a backup plan all the time because you cannot afford to lose a single byte of information any time make sense and then upkeep of the vm is also important for which we need to continuously monitor the vm basically the health monitoring we need to set up and if there is any health issue detected for any vm means the vm starts malfunctioning or starts behaving in a manner which is not expected which is probably causing some problems with the applications hosted within it or some bugs are some bugs some issues are detected you have to actually troubleshoot that also and in order to troubleshoot the monitoring logs are important hence the first step in this case will be monitoring only next portion is azure networking so here we talk about virtual networks subnet subnets common in uh, networking uh, concepts i would say the very basic concepts something on the security part of the virtual network so usually with the physical networks you have some firewalls and all so we do have some basic level services at that level and then we have the firewall concepts also at the top so it all starts with something called as network security groups then along with that we do create some service endpoints where one azure service can be whitelisted to get access to another azure service but not all so it all depends on what is your requirement then 
implementing the Azure DNS services, especially if you are making your deployments available via internet to the worldwide crowd, definitely this DNS service will be required to be configured. Otherwise, people will not be able to reach your servers at all. And if they don't get able to do the same, the main problem will be your applications hosted or the services hosted in your virtual machines will never be accessible over the internet. Because all the time we cannot actually share the public IP of the machine due to security reasons. Right, so that's where the DNS services are very, very important. If you are from the networking background, you can easily understand this because this is the same topic. Usually we uh, go through or same feature that we usually go through even in on premises networking also. So that's where we actually learn how to configure private and public DNS zones and so on. Then configuring the Azure load balancer and application gateways, which is another type of load balancer only precisely that works with your application services. And then we move on to Azure governance and security. So this is just another part of your identity and governance only. So specifically here, the focus will be on managing the subscriptions and resource groups, the access to them with RBAC, then how do I create the resource locks? How do I use the tags in order to define my resources or create my resources? OK, resource locks are basically going to be helpful when I'm working in a multi team environment and where the access to different resources is granted to different team members. Again, these members may be from same team or maybe from different teams, so accidentally they should not be able to delete any resource or modify any resource. So that's where the resource locks are there. There has to be a process that if something needs to be deleted, something needs to be changed, there has to be an approval and someone responsible person only is able to do it from the back end. So that's where resource locks are there. Then implementing and managing Azure Security Center and Azure Sentinel, which is an additional service built on Azure in order to take care of all the security requirements at the very high level. Azure Security Center is something which provides you some sort of guidance by coming up with some recommendations by scanning your deployments. Recommendations are always based on the industry standards and internet standards both at the same time. Next section is virtual network connectivity. Again, an extension of networking only where we talk about providing the access to the virtual network from an on premise system, which could be an ad hoc system like someone working from home needing the access, or it could be something about. Accessing the company hosted on premises servers and services as well. So this is where we talk about VPN. Then it could be also about two VNets communicating with each other. VNets means virtual networks communicating with each other. That's where we speak about VNet peering. And then there is an advanced service which brings along the VPN services along with the routing and little bit of load balancing services also that is called as Azure Express Route. And then implementing and managing Microsoft Azure Virtual Wide Area Network, creating your private internet. Then we move on to monitoring and backup once again. So th uh, this is again an extension uh, feature only for Azure monitoring. So how do you monitor Azure resources? It is more about the tools which you can use. So Azure Monitor, App, App Insights, Azure backup services that you can use. And similarly, for automation and configuration management, you have Azure automation services, update management services, and Azure desired state configuration, which is specifically built for managing and maintaining the state of different Azure virtual machines that you might be working with. 
this is not limited to only azure virtual machines but also on premises hosted virtual machines can benefit from this as azure dsc extends to your on premises resources as well any questions so far Okay, I assume no questions. Let's move on to the next section of the presentation, the format of the exam, which has got different topics to be understood. It's all about how the exam is conducted. So there are two modes the exams are conducted. One is you can appear for this exam from the comfort of your home or your office or whichever place you want. What you need is a setup which includes a good quality camera, a good quality microphone, well lit environment so that the camera output is at optimum, no background noise, and along with that, a very, very good internet connection, stable internet connection. That's it. The second option is you can actually visit some examination center officially appointed by Microsoft. I guess Pearson View is having their exam centers across uh, different locations, so you can actually look for a nearby exam center, and the information is available directly on the Microsoft's official exam portal itself. The exam center locator tool is built into it with the help of which you can actually share your location and the nearest exam center will be made available to you along with detailed address. Okay. Now the point number one talks about this exam is a proctored exam. Proctored means invigilated. So even if you're Attempting this exam from the comfort of your home, the camera and microphone actually is going to do the invigilation. Each and every activity of yours is going to be recorded on cam and microphone. And then their AI based analysis engines will be analyzing for any unwanted activity. If any unwanted activity is detected, your exam will be canceled. OK, so. Basically, you have to be very careful that. You don't do any activity which makes the system feel that you are actually referring to some documentation. Maybe offline, maybe online, whatever it is. They use screen recorders also, so screen activity also they. Keep on analyzing. Next is types of questions. What type of questions do I get or do I expect? The exam actually consists of variety of questions. They can be simple MCQs where there will be a question with maybe four or five or six options out of which one is correct. It may happen that you feel that all four or all five or all six are correct. In such cases, you have to attempt only that answer which is the most relevant answer. Then there could be, could be multiple. Answer based questions also where out of four, five, six uh, options, there could be two or three correct answers again in that. All answers may be actually correct, but you have to select only the relevant answers. The hint that would be there usually like you have to select two or three. But again, that's not guaranteed. Sometimes there is no hint. So that question becomes a little tricky. It's rare, but sometimes it happens. Apart from that, there could be some interactive questions also, which includes drag and drop and exhibit based questions. Where probably the question might be about how do I do this? So there would be some 
drag and drop content available which are different steps in order to achieve the activity which is being asked and these steps needs to be arranged in the proper sequence what you will be getting is the jumbled up steps so you have to put them in correct sequence by drag and drop exhibit based questions mean where the scenario might be getting explained uh, with the help of some image it could be the portal image also it could be the service specific image also okay it could be the case study explaining image as well okay so you need to interact with the provided content in that case these questions are usually the most tricky ones so you can attempt these questions if and only if you have some practical hands on knowledge and it is not just dummy things you need to have the real project hands on knowledge as well so then it becomes easy to attempt these drag and drop interactive questions next is how many questions do i get so it, the number is not fixed it can be actually anything between 35 to 60 questions okay sometimes it may be more than 60 also sometimes it may it may be less than 35 as well but usual average is somewhere between 40 to 60 only it all depends on what kind of questions you are getting if there are too many complex questions which take time to analyze there you will be having less number of questions if there are more questions it will be having the mix of easy to intermediate level to advanced level questions so where number of advanced questions will be little less that's why number of questions get increased now how much time do i get to finish my exam it is exactly 150 minutes that you get that is equivalent to 2.5 hours which is more than enough to attempt 40 to 60 questions if you practice well if you study well if you have got some hands on knowledge usually within 90 minutes you can finish your exam and then rest of the 60 minutes you can review whatever the answers you have attempted now the next question usually is how much do i need to score in order to clear the exam the highest score that you can have or you can score within this exam is 1000 out of which you have to score a minimum of 700 in order to clear the exam 699 is also fail 700 or more means you have cleared now there could be a question here like how do i find out which area i am weak in if i suppose score 750 so where i lost my 250 uh, marks or points so at the end of the exam once you submit apart from the score section wise chart also is created which shows you which particular skill set you scored the most which particular skill set you scored the least and with that you can find out which area you are strong in which area you are weak in make sense any questions here so i have one question yeah please go ahead so how, how to renew the certification like for example if one has given and the validity is one year right so what will be the process of renewing the certification or when i say the renewal it? validity i will not say is one year or something validity is actually lifetime the credential is lifetime only just oh, that okay. because the azure services keep on updating on regular basis right they keep on updating the questions and the skill set which are measured in the exam 
so what you have to do is you just need to attempt the renewal exam for that once the exam is released so which will actually focus only on the new skills which are required now which will be in addition to what you have already got the certification in whereas if you give the fresh exam it will be measuring all the skills right from the scratch make sense so something so, like top up so it so you mean to say we need to reappear for the certification again we need to pay again yeah to... so you need to reappear but it will be only the uh, exam specifically for people who have already certified okay right so the fees will be also different in that case okay yeah okay complete fees will not be applicable for the new portion okay, got it thank you yeah thanks so that's why i use the term top up over here you just need to top up your skills you need to yeah. prove that okay there are some new services which have come into azure substantial amount of services which have come into azure and i am now certified in those skills as well so i know these skills as well i have the hands on knowledge on those as well so that adds to your credentials got it okay and the time limit passing score will also be the same in this case also yes yes okay okay yeah thank you so uh, saket so we have to yeah. do the renewal uh, process every year the see it is all up to you it's not mandatory it is all up to like whether you actually need that or not you have to also analyze that there are substantial changes uh, or not just for one or two features i myself will not recommend you to appear for that uh, renewal exam makes okay, sense so in in that case that means the validity that we saw it would be of one year so just for example if we don't renew let's say after yeah. second year we i mean we got a mail that you have to renew your certification you you can do it after two year also or three years also okay awesome awesome any time you can renew because i said that uh, though we say that validity is one year it's basically about the exam being available for one year but your certification your credential remains lifetime with you you certified for az204 let's say in year 2023 so this certification is lifetime certification now let's say in year 2025 there is a new certification launched by microsoft named as az205 now exam code has changed right now az205 will be focusing on the core skills of uh, azure only right now right, right. there also there would be a lot of common things which were there in 204 so you would need not get recertified on those existing skill set you just need to appear for the new things which have come into it so it will not be 105 or 205 for you there will be a separate exam the top up exam for you what my point yeah if yeah, three of versions course, of, of exam pass by in that case you have to get recertified from the scratch so let's say okay. two, uh, 106 is launched in between there are two exams already passed on right 204 retired 205 retired and then you are on 206 so you may need the certification completely to be done from the scratch though the credential of uh, 104 will be there with you for lifetime make sense yeah of course okay so next is like how do i register for the exam it starts with a simple step you go to this url uh navjot if you can ping this uh, in the chat box it will help uh here you need to create your certification account basically there you set up your certification profile or your tra transcript and as and when you uh, clear your certifications basically your transcript gets updated automatically you can see what all certifications you have done you get a unique microsoft certified professional id also which you can share with your clients or your employers where they can check the credentials directly online okay so that's the first thing then you need to decide on what exam delivery method you will be preferring 
whether it is going to be online proctored exam from your desired place or you want to go to the testing center and there you want to register for the exam. In case it is a testing center you opt for, if you don't have the required infrastructure at your place, testing center is the way to go. In that case, you have to locate the testing center, go there and get your exam date scheduled, date and time scheduled. Pay for the exam. If it is the online one, you pay online. If it is the offline one, I mean at testing center, you can pay there as well. They also provide you the option of paying online before you visit the exam center. Only the date and time you have to schedule in consultation with them. Then you have to prepare for the exam. So preparing over here doesn't mean that you just need to go through the documentation or books. You actually need to have the practical hands on knowledge as well. So give substantial amount of time for the preparation. Attempt the exam and then at the end you get your results. So practically the result is almost immediate once you submit your exam. Within the next five, 10 minutes, you get your complete report. Certificate these days is not by default being issued by Microsoft. There is a virtual certificate they issue. And if you need physical certificate, you can actually order it online from the certification profile itself by paying a nominal fees over there. Okay. Okay, thanks, thanks for the information. So one more question about the yeah. test centers. So let's say that yeah. people will prefer to go to the test center just to avoid any network issues, right? I mean, everybody will Got think it. if I'm Got if it. I'm giving the paper from home, it may happen that I ran into a network issue. So what we will prefer, I mean, especially what I will prefer to go to a service center and give the paper. Yeah. So if yeah. in case I opt for a service center, so do yeah. I have to pay some extra money to those guys also? Or the no, nothing, the same? nothing. It is just the exam fees that you have to pay. So in that case, if uh, those people are not earning anything from the candidate, so do you think that they would entertain us? Uh, they will be entertaining because uh, they are being compensated by the Microsoft uh, directly in this case. Hey, awesome, awesome, awesome. Makes sense. Thank you. So yes, no yes. extra money involved. It is yeah. uh, basically like they are uh, the facilitators who will be assisting you with your uh, uh, you being attempting the exam without any trouble. So they have the entire setup with the uh, inverters and uh, generators and everything. So there is no power outage, then uh, good quality internet connection with backup internet line as well. So everything will be uh, ready for you, which you may or may not have at home. Right, sir. Right? Yeah, okay, okay. so well, go one ahead. more. Oh, so going please, please. Uh, for the attempt from the uh, office may be a good solution here because usually the office environment already is equipped with all these things, right? Right. Yeah. One more thing. What I have heard with uh, from my some friend, they told that they have given the paper, but yeah. after 15 days or after a month, they got a mail from Microsoft stating that their certification had been revoked. Okay. So yes, just to just to avoid that scenario. So yeah, let's let's say so basically if you center. attempt this, if you attempt this from the service center, there will be no such issue at all. First of yeah. all, because uh, there is a person who is already monitoring you along That's with true. the uh, CCTV cameras and the uh, cameras on the uh, machine from which you are attempting the exam. So proper invalidation is happening there, right? Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Yeah, that, that was the concern. I mean, I mean we sit yes. at the home and then we get a mail from Microsoft Correct. that your certificate is your we'll be so as home said, land. <laughs> right. As I said, as I said, basically they record and analyze all of your activities, like you uh, looking here and there, right? Or uh, maybe talking to someone else, someone standing behind you, right? So yeah, of course. Once it is caught, basically that's where they cancel the certification. Good, sir. Good. So it may be immediate also. It may be after a week or two weeks also, depending on how much time the algorithm took. There are some actions which are detected immediately. There are some actions uh, which probably needs minute uh, uh, analysis, right? Sometimes the manual analysis is also needed based on the report generated by the automated system. So that's where it may take a time and maybe you get the mail 
say two weeks later or so, as you said. Okay, sure, sir. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so let's move on to the next section, understanding the exam objectives. So this exam measures your ability to accomplish the following technical tasks, which includes mainly five sections over here. You will get the report also based on these five sections, how much you scored. Uh, there will be a bar chart created on this. And based on which you can actually see which area you are strong in, which area you are weak in, or which area you are average in terms of skills. OK, so Azure Identity and Governance is the first section. Azure Storage is next. Azure Virtual Machines is third followed by Azure networking and then followed by Azure monitoring and backup. OK, now the next question would be. What is the weightage of each of these skills, right? Is it important or not? It is yeah, obviously it is <laughs> again with different areas being. Measured. We cannot just say that, OK, it is equivalent weightage for all 20%, 20%, 20% or so. Reason? Because there is one skill which is more important than the other. Correct? So that's where the weightage can vary. It may not be exact equivalent. So here is the range. 15 to 20% weightage for Azure Identity and Governance. Storage is at minimum 10 to 15%. Virtual machines gets higher weightage from 25 to 30%. And ultimately, virtual machines are also dependent on the Azure virtual networks and all. So the highest weightage goes to 32, uh, 35, uh, 30 to 35% of weightage goes to Azure networking, followed by Azure monitoring and backup being at 10 to 15% only. Now the question is why a range? Because I said number of questions also vary. Complexity sometimes also vary, right? So that is why the weightage may go a little bit here and there. One or two questions make a difference of five to ten percent at times. That's why they have given a range. Understood? This is the official figure taken from Microsoft's certification portal only. OK. Next is very important point like what all resources are available to learn about each of the objectives that we just saw on previous two slides. It has to start from Microsoft documentation, official documentation for Azure. So link is there. Navjot can help uh, posting this to chat. Then Microsoft learn a portal which basically focuses on making you learn different Microsoft services, including Microsoft Azure services as well. This contains simulations also. This contains the sandbox environments also because sometimes for some of the Azure services, you need to have the hands on experience in order to learn it and you may not have a subscription all the time ready with you. So in that case, they provide a four hour. Duration sandbox means the sandbox environment which runs continuously up to four hours from the beginning <coughs> where you can actually try out the different services based on the topic you are learning. Then. Microsoft also offers some practice tests in order to get insight of what kind of questions you may get. These will not be the exact questions from the exam, but they will be based on the similar standards. So you get complete insight into what do I expect in my exam? Not what questions I expect, but what kind of questions I expect. That's what the practice tests help you with. Then there are training courses. Microsoft provides uh, some courses uh, at their end which are instructor led courses. Uh, they do it through their official learning partners, so that's where uh, they offer the Microsoft official curriculum. If you buy that curriculum, probably you get the handbook. You get the 
online resources also you get some recorded sessions also along with the sessions instructor led sessions which you can go and uh, attend in person and where focus will be basically to make you ready for the exam but it is their official curriculum only beside this there are different organizations including our own organization optimistic info systems which also do conduct the preparatory courses for these certifications advantages with uh, the organizations like ours is it's not only the certification related content that gets delivered additional content also gets delivered with more case studies being imparted duration may be sometimes more than what microsoft official curriculum asks for advantage is you get more out of it right so if you are not only targeting certification but some project related queries are also there some solutions you are looking for within which you need some help so that also gets covered if you are going with a non official curriculum we also do conduct official curriculums if required as we are also the official learning partners next is there are ample amount of online communities and forums available dedicated to microsoft azure exams which you can actually join there are links provided here as well navjot uh, once again you can put that in chat surely surely sakit i have done that yeah these uh, basically the communities and forums basically help you get quick solutions without actually physically reaching out to someone you just post your query and someone will get back to you with the suggestion answer whatever applicable and then of course there are books and study guides which you can use at the end of the presentation you will see some of the important books and study guides which can be referred targeted to az104 exam itself okay so any questions so far fine let's move on so tips and strategies for preparing for az104 certification to start with it's not a rocket science this is the general set of points which we follow before we go for attempting any exam not just certification few additional things are there which are specific to certifications so it starts with reviewing the exam objectives basically five skills are being measured take one skill at a time and start preparing for the content of that particular skill what all things are covered in that skill focus on that those things first set of resource that you refer to as i said before also should be the official microsoft learning resources because they provide the most up to date information during self study okay blogs may help may not help because may, many times the blogs may be having some outdated content also so always prefer the official microsoft learning resources okay then practice with some hands on experience if you don't have some project to work with to try the hands on probably you can pick up some case studies of your own maybe from internet also you can look for some case studies which you can actually try to solve i mean a, a kind of a mini project you can build with the help of which you get the hands on experience and this way you remember most of the things for long just reading learning by heart is not going to help probably that used to help us up to certain extent while giving the history exam in uh, schools but that doesn't work with the technology right if you don't have hands on experience you cannot remember the things especially when it comes to the steps how do i do this we cannot learn the steps by heart if we do it we remember it automatically yes then complete the relevant online courses tutorials etc in addition to this 
if you still feel that you are lacking somewhere, you can attend the offline instructor led courses. Right, we also do conduct those exams or uh, uh, preparatory courses as well. Uh, maybe Navjot is the right person to guide you on that. What is the process to uh, register for it and attend it? So at the end of the session, he will explain that. Then always explore the sample questions and practice tests. As I said before, that these things basically help you with understanding what kind of questions you can expect. So you are mentally prepared. All the time. And then again, get engaged in some hands on projects, maybe dummy projects, case studies, MOCs that you build. Join the study groups or forums, as I said before, also review the documentation and white papers once again in case if there is some update in some service that has been introduced because exams are continuously modified with the updates coming into the uh, actual Azure services. And then one more important thing is time management and regular study. So time management for that probably once again your sample exams or practice exams will help you. Set a timer that OK, I need to complete my 60 questions within 90 minutes of time only. So it may end up getting finished at say. 200 minutes also. At the beginning, but then slowly once you start attempting those things and practicing the things, this time will automatically start coming down. Once you are at the 90 minutes uh, level, 90 minutes or lesser level and with more success rate, probably you are almost ready to go for the exam. Right, the whole idea of reviewing and reinforcing weak areas is basically with the help of the practice exams you will get the information the report on where you are which area is weaker which area is stronger focus more on the weaker areas practice more on the weaker areas focus on the case studies which are targeted towards those weaker areas and then once again attempt the practice test Again, evaluate this cycle has to go on until and unless your success rate doesn't cross 90% at least. So 90% success rate here means you can score at least 70% within the exam, means 700 marks in the actual exam easily. How to approach the different sections of the exam? So practically, it's more about focusing on the Topics which are covered under each of the. Uh, top level skill set or the section like Azure identity and governance is the first one. So these are the things which you have to focus on Azure Active Directory. Role based access control or RBAC along with Azure policies. Then authentication authorization methods. Managing Azure AD objects which includes users, groups, etc the app registrations, enterprise app registrations, etc. Then. Azure AD integration with on premises uh, AD. And then security and compliance features. So these are the main topics which you are supposed to uh, focus on in the first section Azure identity and governance. Likewise for Azure storage. It all starts with the very, very basic concept on what Azure storage is all about. How do I work with it? How do I create an account for Azure storage within my subscription? Then the different type of storage services available like blob, file, table, queue, then data lake. Then uh, security setup and monitoring solutions on storage services and so on. Next section is the compute solution. So where it focuses majorly on the virtual machines. So what virtual machines are? How do I provision them? What configurations do I have? What high availability solutions I have like? Uh, we have availability sets availability zones. What are they? What is the difference between them? Then scale sets are there. What are they? 
explore all those things explore backup and disaster recovery solutions again monitoring troubleshooting for vms then the vm networking security best practices and then automation of the deployment and the scalability then comes azure networking which is actually a piggyback section on azure virtual machines or azure compute solutions so here you need to start with learning the networking fundamentals if you have been working with networking for long probably this is the section which you can skip you might be already having idea about it right next you can go for the specific azure services which are built for networking here we don't have physical network we do have virtual network only but the fundamentals remain the same just that it's more about software based configuration here then how do i set up and configure the vnet how do i make and manage the security options for uh, my network solutions load balancing and traffic management along with express route also different connectivity options that we have we spoke about the vpn uh, uh, vpn peering or vnet peering right and then definitely it has to end up with the practicing on networking scenarios then the next section is about monitoring and backup so precisely azure monitor is one of the service which you have to focus on that starts with conceptual understanding then practical understanding and then the backup solutions and disaster recovery dr solutions okay any questions on that section okay so this is basically some in info as a summarized info on what resources do i have to study for the exam so as i said microsoft documentation microsoft learning are the first level things that you should be focusing on we do have online courses and different platforms like udemy uh, plural site and so on then offline courses like what we offer from optimistic infosystems then there are practice tests there are online practice tests also available there are practice tests which are made available by the organizations like ours then there are community forums and study groups which you can join and then hands on experience is the must you cannot avoid this here is the list of books navjot you can ping this also into the chat not, not sure all books it. are not all books are focusing entirely on az104 but some of the specific topics which are covered within az104 these books some of these books provide more detailed insight into those services as well like azure for architects or azure sentinel these are not the books specifically published for preparing for az104 but they help because they contain more detailed information on many important services which basically are measured or skills on which are basically measured within the az104 exam here are some links for the blogs and websites which you can always keep handy not only for az104 for any azure related exam basically these will help you out now jyot you can post this also in the chat some online courses i have listed only two over here but there are many like these can evaluate though these courses are not all 
available for free. Some of them are free, some of them are chargeable. Microsoft Learn also can be put over here in online courses category. Microsoft Learn courses are all free. Understood? Then there is LinkedIn Learning also, which can come in this category. Let's throw some light on mock exams and practice tests. As I said, what is the importance of mock exams and practice test is like. First of all, assessing myself, where do I stand as on today? Probably this is the first thing I should do if I have already got some ample amount of uh, experience on AZ administration. What all things I know as on today without actually officially studying for AZ 104. I might be 100% ready, I might be 80% ready, I might be 50% ready or 40% ready or maybe less. That's where I start my planning. Which area I already know very well, which area I don't know at all, which area I know but not in detail. And then I probably prioritize the different sections. Make sense? So that's what it is assessing exam readiness, identifying knowledge gaps, time management skills, then understanding question patterns to set up your mindset, reinforcing learning, and then based on all this information, building the exam strategy, which ultimately ends up in helping you to boost your confidence. Make sense or not? These are some of the resources. Now, Jyot, you can post this also in the chat. Where you can find out mock exams and practice tests. Again, not all are free. Some of them are free. Some of them are paid. These are not exam dumps, I would say. These are just mock exams or practice tests. So they prepare your mindset. What type of questions do you get? Not exact what questions do you get? So if you get exact questions that you will find in the exam, that is a kind of a cheating. So probably that will help you clear the exam, but will not help you gain the knowledge. Gaining knowledge is very, very important because many times while speaking to the leaders in different organizations, they have given me the feedback that people do come up with uh, certifications, probably the score of 1000 as well, but they don't know anything. That's just because they go with the dumps. With the exact questions from the exams. And they just learn the questions and their answers by heart. They don't have any practical hands on knowledge. And then the candidates either are rejected during the interview or probably at some later time, even if they are selected at the time of interview at some later time while not being able to deliver on the project. They are actually fired, but so that's not good. So always focus on. Practice exams rather than dumps. OK. How to analyze mock exams and practice test results to improve exam performance. I, I already spoke about this. Review the incorrect answers. This this is one of the best thing that you uh, get with practice exams. <coughs> they tell you, OK, this is the question which you attempted incorrectly. The correct answer is this and this is the explanation. So that helps you review your incorrect answers quickly. That helps you identify your weak areas. Then you can study more on that. Any additional material or resource that you. Probably can use should be used. More hands on on that specific area. And once you feel confident, then retake the practical exam. Practice exam. So this process, as I said, 
has to be repeated until unless you are not very confident that okay now i am ready yeah Hey guys, sorry there was some disconnection in between, so I hope I am audible. Yes. Yeah, thanks for confirming. So just give me a moment. Yeah. So I hope my screen is also visible again. Yes. Yes. OK, so moving on to the last part, some exam day tips. Again, not a very big thing or a rocket science over here. Usually my way of doing the things is like. Suppose today I'm supposed to attempt for the exam at. Say 11 AM. What I would do is. Uh, if it is at home, probably at 9 AM, I'll do a last attempt at one last attempt at the practice exam to build my confidence. If I see good result in a uh, practice exam, uh, that will just boost my morale, isn't it? If it is at exam center, which takes some time to reach, probably little earlier I will take that uh, practice exam and then I'll just get ready and uh, leave for the examination center. Right, so. It's basically one of the important tip over here. Nothing else you should be doing on that day. You should not be reading anything. Usually that's what we do with our regular exams, right? So that's not the thing. Just attempt the practical exam, practice exam once, one last time. Final net practice. You might have seen cricketers uh, taking the net practice just before the inning starts. Bowlers do the uh, bowling practice, batsmen do the batting practice, rest of the people uh, probably take the fielding drills, catching drills, right? They're already well versed in that, but just to boost the morale and be mentally and physically fit, they do that. Something what we call as warm up exercise, right? But that's what it is for. And it's OK if you don't uh, clear the exam in first attempt. It's OK. This happens usually when you are attempting the exam. Any kind of uh, certification exam first time in your life. So that's OK. You can go for a reattempt later on. Prepare well and reattempt. OK. These are again the usual things like how do I manage the time during the exam? So your pace has to be adjusted. Go through all the questions, prioritize the easy ones. There is a time box available. I mean, uh, you can see uh, the timer already. So you can actually say that, OK, I, I'll dedicate one minute or one and uh, half a minute for each of the question or say one minute for easy ones and uh, two minutes for uh, difficult one scenario based ones. So do that. Answer all the questions which you have the confident answer for first. Mark the questions which are tricky or which you are not sure about the answer for late, uh, attempting them later on. It's just like bookmarking. Then review everything what you have attempted is correct or not, and then the non attempted question also. Save some time towards the end, maybe 20 to 30 minutes so that you can do a final review also. Right, don't attempt the question if you are not at all sure about the exam, uh, uh, not sure about the answer. Because there is a negative marking as well, not very heavy negative marking, but there is. It's always better to score zero instead of scoring some minus five or something, right? 
zero is higher than minus five, isn't it? Okay, so that's it from my end, and now we will move into a set of MCQs just uh, to uh, see how much prepared we are at the very basic level, though. Uh, just to give idea what kind of questions you can expect, though I have put very easy ones to save time, but yeah, that that probably is good to kick start. Navjot can take over from here. Uh, he will be taking you through the quiz. I'll be just changing this from my end. Navjot, over to you. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Sakir. Yeah, here comes the first question. Yeah, so anyone on this? Service to monitor and gain insight into the performance and health of Azure resources. Um, Log okay. analytics is one. Someone has Pankaj has. Marked the first A. Another A. Yeah, that's right. Correct. So it's quite, as your log quite easy one. Quite easy one. Let's move on to next. Anyone on this? So we have C, we have D. C mostly. C is the right answer. Great. We spoke about it as well. Great. Here is the next. To protect and recover Azure VMs and data. Someone has answered B. Pankaj has answered B. Anyone else? Manoj suggests C, then Rajesh suggests B. B is the right answer here. As your backup. As your backup. Great, so let's I, move to the next slide. Azure, Azure site recovery is also a correct option, but Azure site recovery is a subset of Azure backup. So if backup is available, backup is the most relevant answer. Okay. Here is the next one. So I believe all of have gone for option A. That's right. As the name suggests, no? <laughs> yeah, correct. So easy one. Good one, good last one everyone. Question. Let's move to the last one. To deploy and manage containerized applications. It's an easy one again, no? So we practically, of... practically there are three answers to this, but only one will be correct. So we have three A's and one B. A is the right answer. AKS. Yeah. One of the very popular services these days, AKS. Yeah. Because it is all about managing the containerized app, whereas container registry is just to make the container images available for reusing. Service fabric is more uh, for uh, microservices deployment and a parallel service partially for Kubernetes. OK. So five minutes you have in case if you have any further questions. Over to you guys. You can use your chat box. You can use uh, your microphone. Anything that you would like. You can okay. unmute and ask. Yeah, Pankaj, please. Hey, thanks for the awesome session. So I think in the session you have talked something about the sandbox where we get a sandbox yeah. that can be used for four hours. 
So yeah. Can you be kind enough to show us exactly where we can see the sandbox? Uh, see, once you go to Microsoft Learn for different Azure topics, whichever topics is uh, like uh, where, uh, which cannot be learned without the hands-on practice, mm -hmm. uh, you by default get a link over there in one of the step itself in that tutorial. Activate Azure Sandbox, you will get a button there. And it will guide you uh, like how do you activate it. So when you say Microsoft Learn, so that means learn.microsoft.com website, correct. right? Correct, correct. Sakit, if you stop sharing, let me show. Let me try if I can uh, yeah. show that, uh, you know, the learn button. Yeah. Sure. I believe uh, you can see my screen now, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the Learn portal, which is very extensive and which is one of the largest, uh, you know, repository of Microsoft, uh, you know, learning material. Now here in, like Saket has said that this this would have different learning paths, different courses, and they have categorized not only based on the career paths but also based on the certifications. And the interesting part is that it has it is like very structured, like Saket has told about uh, there are like three, four areas that are uh, being uh, uh, the candidates would be evaluated upon on this particular certification. So they have categorized all these areas like, you know, prerequisite managing identities. And this is a combination of uh, text, video, as well as sandbox environment, like Saket said. So few of the top the basic topics would might be only the uh, the text I'll just show you. And herein there are some hands on lab also. So it depends upon the topic subtopic. So they would uh, either uh, present in the form of a text blog paragraph or it would be in the form of a small video or it would be in the form of task which will be given. So this is like a small uh, you know video they have designed for this. So very nicely put very detailed. And this is the, you know, we can take it as a, you know, Bible for any certification preparation because it is, and the most important since it is a Microsoft uh, hosting, so it is all always updated. So any changes in any of the topic, any of the uh, the services it is always updated. And they have this nice tracker, like it shows you, you know, what level you are in, uh, how much you have achieved. And then there are small quizzes and small uh, tests in between. So the sandbox environment is very, uh, you know, uh, uh, clearly explained when wherever it is there. So if you if you try this at least, you know, and it, it is free of course. You just need a Microsoft login, and you can start exploring it. All right. So this you can immediately start exploring learn.microsoft.com and uh, type az104 here or the name of certification it will take you to the correct link. So in addition to this, if you have uh, purchased the az104 preparatory Microsoft official curriculum, uh, with that also you will get a 30 days uh, subscription uh, with $100 uh, of uh, credit for uh, deploying and trying out your resources. 30 days is the maximum uh, number of days it will remain active or else if the $100 are consumed, whichever is early, the subscription will stop working. So that is a complimentary subscription which uh, comes along with uh, Microsoft official curriculum. Something what we call as Azure Pass. Pankaj, does that answer your query? Yeah, of course. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other queries or any other doubts? Sure. So uh, thanks. Thanks a lot, Saket, for this wonderful interactive uh, session. And I would yeah. like to thank. Thanks the, to audience uh, as well. Audience also. To being uh, so being so participated and uh, a small request there is a small feedback link which will be shared in the uh, chat box so if you get time please fill that that would be quite encouraging for us so it is a small form to be filled and uh, this is a series which is going on probably next week again uh, there might be something and we reach out to all the all our clients so these events are exclusively for the clients and the customers of optimistic infosystem 
and whosoever nominated via their training manager, learning team or HR teams. So that would be uh, the entire report would be shared with the teams so that they get to know that who has attended, who has not. So thanks a lot. I'll be just sharing this uh, feedback link. So please don't forget to fill that. That would be you know quite encouraging for us.